Hey all, uh, Ian Mathwiz here, uh, still on my phone. I have, maybe I should explain to you why I've been shooting videos on my phone this past week. Uh, it's because my, the cooling fan in my computer died, and my computer won't start as a result, so I've ordered and received now a replacement cooling fan and now I'm helping t to try to install the new cooling fan which is harder than it looks a, a lot harder uh, you pretty much have to take the whole computer apart and um, uh, yeah so uh, hopefully I will be able to start making videos relatively soon but what I wanted to talk about in this video is, well, it's pretty much in the title, uh, the philosophy of cursing, right? It's, I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually try to develop a philosophy of cursing, but I'm, I'm gonna try right here. And my arm is getting tired holding up this stupid phone, but I'll... Uh, do this as long as I can. Uh, or I could switch arms, you know, how about that one? But, basically, my take, and I've explained this before to some degree in a previous video, it's called Eye to Eye and Transhumanism. Uh, and it was in response to something Eye to Eye had said. But in this video, I'm going to express it somewhat more in depth. And essentially what you've got is, in my opinion, and by the way, I was pushed to make this video by a conversation I had with Tracy Harris on her Facebook page. And for those of you who don't know who Tracy Harris is, she's a co-host of The Atheist Experience which is a show that I put on, uh, I post videos of it on my YouTube channel occasionally. So I was having a conversation with her, and we were talking about swearing, and she more or less agrees with me on this, but the idea is swearing is a way of vocalizing an exclamation mark, right? If you put a swear word into your sentence, the essentially what you've got is a sentence which is more extreme. It really tells the other person what your emotions are. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative emotion. Uh, you can say, wow, that's just fucking beautiful. And that's just as valid. The idea is, it's like saying, wow, that's just beautiful, times a, gaz times a gajillion. And you know that I'm serious when I'm using fake numbers. But, essentially, that's what you have. But, there is some kind of taboo in our culture around curse words and personally I would think that the reason is because people implicitly or explicitly associate some kind of magic powers with these words I mean they're called curse words for God's sake that alone should clue you in on the origin of this taboo but there is a taboo amongst both believers and non-believers alike. I've seen people who have legitimately thought that swearing is sinful. And even among non-theists, people who don't swear are generally seen as having more class somehow than somebody who does swear. And that's just wrong. There is no intrinsic connection 
between the two. The only reason why a connection is made is because we have some, this taboo around swearing, which essentially forces people to assess, not forces people, but people assess these words in a negative light. And I'm probably rambling at this point, but I, this prejudice is so deeply ingrained into our culture that when somebody says, hey, these words are absolutely no big deal, a lot of people d just can't accept that for one reason or another. But, now, I'm not... I don't go around telling five-year-olds that these words are okay. I generally respect the, uh, a parent's rules. I might call, call them out on them, but I generally res will respect uh, the parent's rules under their house. But that goes both ways, remember. While you're in my house, or my apartment, my rules apply uh, within at least the contract that I signed with my university, at, at least. But since I'm given enough leeway to allow cursing in this apartment, I can and do allow it. And Tracy gave me a story about she was going into a car to meet somebody, and she said, Oh my god, I'm sorry I'm late. I got on the fucking phone with, and then realized that there was a nine-year-old in the car. And then she turned to the child and said, I'm sorry, that was not a nice word. I shouldn't have said that. And then the mother of that child turned to her and said, Oh, it's okay. He knows that it's okay to say fuck, as long as it's not cursing someone else out. Like, fuck you. And that, I think, is a pretty good parental policy. I mean, I would add the caveat that, you know, don't swear if you're in, like, a school that explicitly prohibits it. But I think, in general, that's a pretty good policy. And I wish that more parents were that liberal. But... Alright, so I guess that's it for this video. I can't think of anything else that I have to say, so, um, see ya.